Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Frank here. Got a new tool. This is a, an 18 inch bandsaw made by Laguna, the 18BX. And I just finished putting a bandsaw blade on it. So I mentioned in a couple of videos ago that I was changing out some of the tools. I took some of my tools to the other to the other house. Um, my resaw, my Hitachi resaw, and I've got my Delta bandsaw, which is still here, but it's going to go. It's right here. It's the standard 14 inch Delta bandsaw. So the plan here is to replace two tools with one. And since uh, my floor space in here is um, at a premium, that's what I've decided to do. So this bandsaw will do both of the, will do the work of both of those other bandsaws and then some. So it has substantial more capacity uh, than the Hitachi resaw, which would resaw to 12 inches depth of cut. This will resaw to 16 inches depth of cut. Uh, I don't know that I would ever need to do that, but I certainly have used 10 or 12 inches on numerous occasions. So this will cut to 16 inches deep. So this blade guide comes all the way up cranks up. So I didn't, I didn't record the unloading and unboxing and assembly um, of this. I did use my forklift. I went down about a half mile down the lane to where the tractor trailer that delivered it could turn around and I took the pallet and this was laying on its side so it was almost seven feet the box was seven about seven feet long and uh, picked it off the truck with my forklift no problem and brought it back the shipping weight is like 450 pounds 400 and 470 pounds so forklift had no problem with it uh, I being by myself I did have to use um, you need to stand it up. You need to just stand it up out of the box. And as you can see, it's, I mean, it's over six feet tall. So uh, weighing 450 pounds, 440 pounds, I think is the net weight. There's no way I could do that myself. So I enlisted my Kubota front end loader, had it strapped to the pallet, lifted the pallet up, tilted it the rest of the way upright really uh, no problem doing doing that they do advise that you get two or three people to do it if you have to you know if you're doing it manually so I didn't like I said I didn't record any of that uh, but I do want to just talk a little bit about this of course there's nothing sponsored here I paid for this with my own money um, and it's too early for me to have really much of a uh, uh, of an assessment of its use and functionality. After I get to use it some more, I'll I'll probably do another another video on it. But I thought I would give my first impressions of this. So overall, it's it's beautiful. I mean, it's. Um, it's stylish now uh, and Laguna I think is known for pretty nice design and uh, you know the tools I've seen of theirs are are pretty nice now the other tools I looked at I looked at Grizzly and quickly discounted the Grizzly stuff I looked at Rikon R-I-K-O-N which has a similar saw, and I looked at um, 
Jet, again, a similar saw. All very similarly priced. Uh, not a whole lot of difference. I was originally thinking about a 15 inch, but I want my, one of my criteria uh, was a three horsepower motor, and this has a three horsepower motor. So that was one of the uh, deciding factors on this saw and the 18 inch um, version of it. They do have a 15 inch, I believe, but I think it's only two and a half horsepower. I almost, I mean, I considered that, but um, the footprint's about the same. So, and the price not differential, not that much. So I went for the larger one, though I didn't go for, I could have gone for a 20 inch saw, but this is, this is fine. And of course the, the measure of the saw is the distance roughly from the blade to the back. And it's the maximum width of a piece of wood that you can fit between the two feet, between the, the vertical upright and the blade. And my Delta saw was 14 inches and 14 inches is pretty, pretty standard in woodworking. Uh, this being 18, it's a little bit, a little bit better. So I put a blade, three eighths inch blade on here. I like these uh, latches for the covers. They have a cam in here. So the more you turn it, the snugger it gets. I like that. And you can see the upper wheel. It does have a tension gauge here, the tension wheel here. Uh, I will say one of the things that was, you know, a factor on here was this quick release tension. You pull down on this arm and it cuts, releases the tension on the blade so you can change the blade more quickly. Uh, putting the blade on was pretty typical of other band saws. My other band saws, very similar process. You, you know, open the doors and, you know, thread a blade around up through this, up through this groove into the, and then around the wheel. That opens up so you can feed it between the blade guides. Take this blue cover, take this blue cover off and feed the blade and remove this screw. Feed the blade through this slot and then down through the blade guides underneath the table. And, and then tension the blade. So it was very straightforward, just like every other bandsaw. Uh, that I've had, and that's probably four or five other bandsaws. So, no surprises there. Uh, the blade guides are a little different. These are all ceramic. So there's actually a solid ceramic block behind the blade, and you look, it's circular. So it's this, it's this circle, white circle behind the blade, and so the back of the blade touches against that. And then there's a pair of guides, top and bottom, that adjust against the sides of the blade behind the teeth. So it captures the blade pretty well. And there's similar guides underneath the table. So most bandsaws have ball bearing, ball bearings as guides. Uh, the ball bearings, you know, seem to work fine, though they do wear. The, adv the advantage of these, ostensibly, is that there's less wear. Oh. Well, there's my butchie boy. Oh, it's raining again. Oh. Wow. Yeah, we're in the middle of a tropical storm <laughs> here. <laughs> um. Uh, most of you know that I'm on the, you know, on the East Coast. We we're getting Ophelia and the uh, water was up over the dock overnight and I think it's going to go back over the dock 
tonight it's right at the almost at the top of the dock this high tide it's supposed to be a little bit higher than last time no no risk to any any property or anything down there since we're the house is like 25 feet above the river so we don't have any flooding concerns i walk around this machine just uh give you a couple of make a couple comments i am working on hooking up the dust collection there are two four inch dust ports one at the bottom here and one right below the blade i have some leftover flex duct that i pulled out i need some splitters to plumb it all together so i'm waiting on waiting on that two four inch dust ports i think that's typical of bandsaws of this type i did spring for the mobile stand called the mobility kit which is two wheels here at the bottom and then a cam operated wheel back here that allows you to move the bandsaw around having some flexibility to be able to move it is important to me so i did spring for that it is a 220 volt only I have 220 service here, so that's no issue. It does provide another 220 or uh, 240 volt outlet here, and this is for a work light. I looked at the wiring diagram and was wondering if I could just plug another tool into this. So I, I could use another plug. Uh, I have three 220 volt tools here on a drop I've only got two plugs so the shaper is 220 the bandsaw is 220 my table saw is 220 doesn't look in the wiring diagram like there's anything between it and the power going in so I don't think there's a power limitation there's no breaker circuit breaker fuse on that so I think that's would work okay. It does have, I think, a a nice adjustment here. Let me loosen it up a little bit for the depth of cut or the height of the blade guide. Smooth when you tighten it down. It's it's rock solid. So it's got a nice rack and pinion set up there. I do like the blade brake. There's a foot pedal here which stops the blade. So I'm going to turn it on. Now, I didn't have to turn it off. The foot pedal disconnects the power. So, I do have that squeak. What you doing, Butchie? Being a good boy? Yeah. Okay. So you turn it off hit the brake pedal to stop the the band oh. and there's my brew brew there's my brew brew yeah you're a good boy you're my good boy you're wet too you're both wet alright one way to turn it on and that's the the on, on button and there's three ways to turn it off hit the off button hit the emergency stop or hit the foot brake the foot brake, the foot brake does disconnect the power the table is very nice it's uh, looks like it was surface ground it doesn't have any mill, milling marks on it, so someone went to the trouble of putting it on a surface grinder. We'll comment about one thing. It doesn't really have anything to do with the 
the machine, but the blade, this was a Laguna blade, uh, and it's a 3 8 inch blade. It had excessive drift. I mean, it was at, I don't know, 15 degree angle, which all bandsaws are going to, blades, it's, it's peculiar to the blade, all our blades are going to drift a little bit. That is, they don't cut perfectly straight. You have to angle your workpiece to follow a line, for example. And you typically then adjust your fence. You have a little bit of adjustment available to make it parallel. And then you can use the fence to rip lumber and you get a straight cut. But this blade had excessive drift. And I used my uh, diamond hone just to touch the teeth on the side it was it was drifting to the left which means it's cutting more on the left side than it was on the right side so very lightly touching the stone to the left side takes a little bit of set off of the teeth on this side and that's normally straightens out the cut and it did once I got it uh, adjusted, tweaked, you know, I, I eliminated the, the drift almost completely. So I've had to do that on other bandsaw blades and other bandsaws. It's not uncommon, but this particular blade was excessive, I think. I do like the tall fence. It's like six inches tall. So if you're resawing lumber or cutting boards on edge to make two thin boards out of one thick board, uh, nice support here. It has a stop. Don't know that I would use that much, but there's a stop down here that you can adjust to, you know, a particular length of cut. If you're just going to cut three inches deep, you set this and it stops your cut each time. Uh, there is a scale that they provide. You ha there is some adjustment on the scale, so you can you could set it up so that you'd get repeatable cuts based on that but every time you change the blade you have to readjust this there's a window here into the uh, interior so that you can see your tension gauge the table does tilt um, six degrees to the left 45 degrees to the right i did purchase a carbide tip resaw blade. I purchased several several blades. This is a quarter inch blade and I purchased this inch and a quarter wide blade with carbide carbide teeth. So that's for resawing primarily. I figured out the reason for the squeal on startup. I retensioned the belt. I think that solved the problem. Try it again here. I think that's it. There's only so Sorry, many moving good. parts. There's not that many parts, so. Uh, sounded like a belt squeal, but seemed like the belt was pretty darn tight. But I did loosen the bolts and it was easy to tighten some more. So I think that solved the problem. All right, so that's just my first impressions. Uh, really not having a had a chance to uh, use the machine yet. I'll come back uh, in uh, probably a couple months I'll do another uh, review of it after I've had a chance to use it. I'll put several different blades on it. We'll test it. We'll test dust collection. We'll test the horsepower. Does it have enough power to resaw uh, as my Hitachi? My Hitachi was three horsepower as well. Uh, the difference is the Hitachi had a universal motor, so like a big router motor with a reduction system reduction drive so it's very loud motor this has a an induction motor 
so it uh, is much quieter typical of the motors on the shaper or the or the table saw which are also three horsepower so uh, we'll come back with some more critique of it once I've had a chance uh, to use it but just wanted to share the new tool with you. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.